MLU drives the key aspects of the pathophysiology of the majority of the well-known common high mortality diseases, uh, as well as most of the aging degenerative diseases. So I believe that by understanding this complex individual pattern, we can alter the path of health and changes for our patients and ourselves. There is a distinct change in this anabolic uh, pattern, although, as you'll see in later slides, testosterone declines 1 to 1.5% 1 per year uh, after about age 35. Uh, 2 to 3% uh, in individuals that have disease, they've found that people that have existing diseases have greater reductions in the anabolic hormones. Is it the reduction in anabolic hormone that allows the disease processes to manifest themselves? Or does the disease process trigger an internal chain of events that then reflexively lowers the anabolic hormones? It's a little bit of both. Adrenal uh, proandrogens, your pregnenolone, DHEA, androstenedione, are re reduced at a greater rate than our testosterone, and higher in particularly with inflammatory diseases. Growth hormone pulsatility uh, gradually declines in output. By age 70, most people have pretty much flat growth hormone curves. Uh, and there's an increase in general in SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin, that starts to bind our anabolic hormones and reduce the bioavailability. So it's, uh, as you'll see later, uh, watching your SHBG levels, you'll be amazed at some people who, who are running very, very high SHBG. That can be men and women. Women with very high SHBG don't respond to estrogen because it becomes bound very quickly. Men with high SHBG may have normal testosterone, but their free testosterone is clearly deficient. I'm going to give you some tools to assess that that I think will be one of the most useful tools you'll get. Cortisol generally may increase or decrease depending upon stress and disease, and there's an increase in CRF drive to the adrenals, but it's not met by, it's met by a shift into cortisol and away from DHEA. The body will take the downstream hormones and pull them up and shift them into cortisol uh, at the expense of the balancing uh, anabolic hormones. These inflammatory cytokines, uh, IL-6, the COX-2 metabolites, uh, your prostaglandins, uh, they shift from the Th2 humoral anti-inflammatory toward Th1 cellular pro-inflammatory pathways uh, in the differentiation or redifferentiation of T lymphocytes. Lymphocytes may be programmed de novo when they're null into one path or another, or they can be shifted from being a T1 dominant lymphocyte into a T2 back and forth by control by the hormones. So uh, controlling this balance both pathways are important, but out of balance, inflammatory results in increase in autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, and so on. Increased INOS, uh, inflammatory nitric oxide, or uh, they also inflammatory, <laughs> sorry. And pro -apt, it's a pro -apt apoptotic activator, uh, decreased uh, ENOS and NNOS. I'll go into that a little bit, but those are different forms of nitric oxide synthase that control nitric oxide production, some of which is pro-inflammatory and some of which is vasodilatory and relates to communication in the, in the nervous system on uh, neural stimulation. The, there's a decrease in T3 and peripheral conversion and a reflex increase in CRH. CRH, if you give a CRH stimulation test, you'll get a big outpouring of prolactin. Prolactin's an inhibitor to many of the downstream uh, hypothalamic hormones like TSH and, and, uh, and LH. Uh, it's also a growth promoter. It may be uh, related to some cancers. Uh, it's pr produced peripherally also. Prolactin is produced in the breast. It's produced in the prostate. Uh, and in the brain, it may suppress libido and sexual response if your prolactin levels are elevated. There's also an increase in MAO enzyme activity. Your MAO enzymes are breaking down your dopamine and your norepinephrine, so a lot of people are low in the, in the central nervous system uh, hormones. And when we do our two-dayer, David has a lot of experience with dealing with the neurotransmitters and, and 24-hour collections and correcting those. And, uh, he's opening my mind to the fact that we really have to pay attention to our neurotransmitters as well as the hormones to get the best effects. 
Oop. Insulin capacity decreases. There's decreasing beta cell population, increased insulin resistance, resulting in increased hemoglobin A1C, tissue glycation. The ages changes. Um, reduction in major mitochondrial functions and AP, ATP regeneration. The mitochondria are under their own genetic control. They have their own DNA. Uh, this DNA is activated to make more little mitochondria by the anabolic hormones. So as your anabolic hormones drop, your ATP generation is going to drop in every tissue of the body. Uh, pretty important. I think if you put one thing in aging that's the most uh, common uh, thing that happens to most people, it's a decrease in the functional capacity, number, and output of ATP from your from your uh, mitochondria. There's a decrease in all the regulatory hormones and a dyssynchrony. It's as much of a dyssynchrony. When we're young, we have this nice symphonic diurnal variation and our, our hormones go through the peaks and valleys as we age. It, it flattens out or becomes totally dyssynchronous, throwing our sleep cycles off, our wake cycles off. And, uh, the healing cycles they're finding doing surgery when you're at a low point is at high risk, and a high point is much safer. These are very important uh, little subtle changes. Um, and a reduction in opioid control, decrease in the enkephalins, beta endorphins, decrease in hypothalamic control. You see this most dramatically in chronic fatigue syndrome. Their, their beta endorphin and enkephalins are all screwed up. And anybody that's been on cocaine or an, on any of the uh, codeine and, and morphine, any of the, the uh, addicting drugs, they really throw these off and, and uh, hypogonadism is a... This is kind of in... This is for males, really, but I'm sure there's some overlap with females. You can pick any point in the circle, and the things that I was just mentioning are all kind of in there. Uh, if we just start in the center with aromatase, aromatase levels uh, tend to increase, uh, particularly if you're gaining weight and so on, but aromatase tends to go up. So despite, and maybe it's compensatory to aging changes in lower testosterone that our body starts to upregulate aromatase because the most important hormone in the body for men is not testosterone, it's estrogen. Uh, so in a way it's protective. Uh, so this increase in aromatase, if you look at the levels of estrogen in men, they fall at a much lower rate in general than the testosterone does. So the body's trying to maintain it, I think. But when it's uh, over-regulated and, and upgraded, you can get excessive testosterone, and that's not good. Uh, men like to be out kicking the football around and not shopping and chatting. But as you get closer to the high estrogen levels, Libido goes down, sex function goes down, and it cancels some of the beneficial effects of testosterone. It's all in the balance. But if aromatase increases, if you follow some of the areas, let's just go straight down from as aromatase goes up and, in, and estradiol goes up, you get more insulin resistance. Insulin sensitivity goes down. What does that do? It causes an increase in obesity, fat cell mass. Uh, as fat cell mass goes up, you get more fat cell aromatase. So you get all these little cycles. Uh, as fat cell ma mass goes up, we know now that fat cells generate many little uh, inflammatory cytokines. They start producing. They're not just storage for fat, but very active cells. And as inflammatory cytokines go up and nitric oxide goes up, these are stimulators of aromatase. Another little cycle right in that, uh, in that feedback loop. Inflammation goes up, cortisol goes up. Body responds by doing that, but it robs DHEA in the process. So DHEA goes down as cortisol tends to go up. As cortisol goes up, it blocks the conversion of T4 to T3 and shifts to reverse T3. TRH then is upregulated to compense, compensate for the lower T3, and TRH stimulates prolactin. Prolactin goes up, it downregulates LH and FSH. As they go down, testosterone goes down. As testosterone goes down, it also controls pulsatility of growth hormone. 